The quarterback is the most important position in college football, and this year there are plenty of underrated guys in the transfer portal. The portal has gone absolutely nuts, especially since 2021, but each and every year there are a couple quarterbacks who come out of nowhere, are underrated, or just flat out exceed expectations. In today's video, I'm going to outline five underrated quarterback transfers who I think could one, have a huge impact next year, two, come out of nowhere, or maybe even break through and become college football superstars. I got five of them and I'm super excited for this one. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or transfer I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about five underrated transfers for the 2024 college football season. The first guy I want to talk about is Diego Pavia. While he had that incident on the New Mexico football practice facility, he ended up really balling out this past season for New Mexico State. Going back in time, Pavia was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and eventually went to Volcano Vista High School. During his high school career, he completed over 100 passes for 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. He also had five interceptions, ran for nearly 500 yards, and had nine scores on the ground. He didn't really get many offers coming out of high school though, so he decided to play Juco football at New Mexico Military Institute. In his career there, he ended up throwing for 2,600 yards and 31 touchdowns, which is four picks. He also ran for over 1,100 yards and 15 scores as well, and he helped them win a national championship. The guy was actually pretty insane and was wanted by a couple of college football programs. He ended up deciding to leave for New Mexico State as he committed to them over Jackson State and St. Francis. While that is by no means the biggest names in the world, he was still getting FBS attention after playing in the JUCO, which is pretty impressive for a quarterback. In 2022, Pavio would end up playing in 12 games, starting 8 of them. He threw for 1,400 yards with 13 passing touchdowns and finished second on the team with over 500 yards. He combined for 21 total scores, and Pavi was the future for New Mexico State. In 2023, he had his breakout season as he threw for 2,900 yards with 26 touchdowns and 9 picks. He also ran for nearly 1,000 yards on the ground and had 7 scores there as well. He helped New Mexico State have one of the most insane turnarounds as they went from 2-10 to 7-6 to 10-5. He was named the Conference USA Player of the Year and notably threw for 200 yards and 3 touchdowns in a road victory over Auburn. When he decided to enter the portal, Nevada was the first school to offer him, but eventually he settled and went to the Power 5 level at Vanderbilt. Pavia will now get to be an SEC quarterback, and his connection with former New Mexico State offensive coordinator Tim Beck is the reason why he's with the Commodores. When it comes to his impact next year, he'll battle it out with Utah transfer Nate Johnson, as both Ken Seals and AJ Swan transferred. Pavia, in my opinion, will be the guy, as I think Johnson is super unpolished, and obviously Diego has much more experience has great stats, and I guess has already proven he can win on the road in the SEC. Pavi also has great knowledge of the offense, and his progression from 2022 to 2023 was actually pretty insane. He has a great arm and great pocket presence, he's a dual threat, and also has the tenacity and guts to probably make it in the SEC. While Vanderbilt has been atrocious on offense, there were moments when both Ken Seals and AJ Swan actually played pretty decent. I don't think Vanderbilt will end up finishing higher than last in the conference, but Pavia could be the best quarterback to come through there in quite some time and could at least make their games a little bit more competitive. He's definitely an underrated guy to watch for this season. Well, over the last few years, Maryland has enjoyed steady quarterback play from Talia Tungavaloa. It is now time for him to be done. He tried his best to get an extra year out of the NCAA, but it got shot down. Talia is no longer the starter, so they had to go out and find a new guy. Let me introduce you to our next underrated transfer, MJ Morris. I'm going to publicly apologize as I made a video about him a couple months ago about how he quit on NC State, and at the time, that is what everything seemed to indicate, but behind the scenes, there was more going on. Going back in time, though, Morris played at two different high schools, which included Pace Academy and Carrollton High School, both located in Georgia, and really blew up during his junior year. He started to get a ton of offers, and then capped that off with a great senior campaign. He completed 63% of his passes for 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns. He also ran for over 600 yards and 7 scores on the ground too. Morris was a high major player and at one point was ranked as high as the number 5 dual threat quarterback in the country. He was also listed as the number 36 player in the state of Georgia and a 4 star recruit by rivals. He ended up deciding to sign with NC State and became the first true freshman since Phillip Rivers to start a quarterback for the Wolfpack. He ended up getting the nod versus Wake Forest and actually had a decent couple of games last year before he suffered an injury versus Boston College. Ultimately, NC State decided to move in a new direction, as instead of turning it over to Morris, the redshirt freshman, they brought in Brennan Armstrong from Virginia. Armstrong really should have taken advantage of his stock after the 2021 season, but he ended up floating around and spent his final year this past year at NC State. Armstrong was named the starter, and Morris was only going to play if he got hurt. Eventually, Armstrong struggled horrifically, and Morris was thrusted in. 
He ended up going 3-1 as the starter, and then he decided to quit. At least that's what we all thought. He began his redshirt process, and while NC State still had a chance to win 10 games, go to the ACC Championship, and play in a good bowl, he was just done. This at the time was extremely controversial, and all the details indicated that he was just literally quitting on the team and trying to increase his stock. I made a video about it, so I guess I want to apologize for it, but it seemed he quit on the team to go to the portal, but there was more to the story. MJ reported to the media that he wanted to remain with the Wolfpack football program, but David Doran approached him saying they wanted to go in a different direction and wanted to get a guy out of the portal. I don't know if they told him that immediately, or if he heard that news and then decided to sit out. Either way, there was more to the story. In a total of nine games at NC State, Morris totaled 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, and six picks. When he finally got to the portal, many thought he would go to LSU, but he ended up going to Maryland. This was a huge get. Morris was ranked as the number 27 transfer quarterback and the 151st best player in the portal according to 24-7 Sports. The reason he ultimately went to Maryland was probably one, the opportunity to play, but back in time when he committed to NC State, their director of player personnel was a guy who is now on the Maryland staff. That connection helped him get there, and he will more than likely take over as a starter for Talia. Morris is a guy who has proven he can win, has experience, is pretty athletic, and has great traits. I don't think he'll take over the Big Ten by any means, but Morris will be a solid player and has the potential to blossom into a much better player. We'll just have to wait and see, though. It always seems that the state of Georgia produces big-time quarterbacks, as just like MJ Morris, they produced Max Brosmer. Brosmer was by no means a big recruit coming out of high school, as he was literally not ranked. He ended up eventually signing with New Hampshire, the same place that Ryan Day played, and that was after a pretty decent high school career. He ended up throwing for 3,459 yards and 31 touchdowns while he was at Centennial High School in Georgia. In total, in two years as a starter, he threw for over 7,000 yards and 61 touchdowns, and also ran for over 700 yards and 7 scores. I'm not quite sure why Brosmer's only offer was New Hampshire, but he ended up proving the world wrong. In 2019, he saw action in all 11 games, throwing for 1,900 yards with 12 touchdowns and 12 picks. He was pretty raw at the time, and then he wouldn't start again until 2022. In that year, he'd start all 13 games, finishing top 10 in both passing yards and passing touchdowns, and ended up leading New Hampshire to a pretty decent season in which they got to the FCS playoffs. Brosman would return in 2023, starting all 11 games. He was ranked number one in the FCS in both passing yards per game and total offense. He was number two in the nation in passing yards with 3,464 and number two in passing touchdowns with 29. Brosmer ended up having an incredible career at New Hampshire and will go down as one of the best quarterbacks in school history. He was a first-team All-American in the FCS in 2023 and has ultimately decided to transfer to Minnesota. The Athlon experiment did not work for the Gophers and he has since transferred to Rutgers, so now Brosmer will likely be the guy. According to 24-7 Sports, he's a four-star player, the number 17 transfer quarterback, and a top 100 dude in the transfer class of 2024. Brosmer will bring three years of starting experience, huge FCS accolades, and pretty decent measurable. While I don't think he'll be a top-end first-run NFL draft prospect, Brosmer strikes me as a tough guy who will go under the radar and win games and put up numbers for Minnesota. There have been a couple of FCS quarterbacks who have really done well over the last few years, with guys such as Cam Ward and Austin Reed making that jump to the FBS level and proving it can work. Max Brosmer could be the next one up, and if he wins that starting job at Minnesota like I think he would, he's a name to watch out for. The fourth guy we're going to talk about in today's video is AJ Swan. A few years ago when Jaden Daniels transferred to LSU, I honestly didn't know if he was going to win the starting job. They already had both Miles Brennan and Garrett Nussmeyer, and Brennan was the favorite to start, and Nussmeyer was a highly ranked kid who had already had some experience on the team. Daniels ended up proving everybody wrong, and Swan in my opinion is in a similar position. They already have Nussmeyer on the roster, and Swan right now looks like he'd be number two on the depth chart, but anything can happen. Going back in time, Swan also grew up in Georgia as he went to Cherokee High School and had a huge career. In total, he threw for 6,900 yards with 65 touchdowns, and he completed 60% of his passes. Swan was a huge deal, and that's why he originally decided to commit to Maryland. By the end of it though, Swan ended up flying up recruiting boards and would actually flip his commitment to Vanderbilt. I'm not quite sure why he did that, but according to 24-7 Sports, Swan was a four-star player, the number 23 quarterback, and the 402nd best player in the class of 2022. He ended up having an immediate impact at Vanderbilt, as he battled it out with both Mike Wright and Ken Seals. He ended up starting a couple games into the season, and was named a mid-season true freshman All-American. In total, he threw for 1,200 yards with 10 touchdowns and just two interceptions. He seemingly had unlimited potential, and at a place like Vanderbilt, he was doing pretty good. In 2023, he would return, starting six games, and throwing for 1,400 yards with 12 scores. 
Injuries unfortunately have kind of held Spawn back as he had a concussion in 2022 and then missed six games in 2023 with an elbow issue. For some reason, he decided to transfer away and Diego Pavi is now there and he ended up on LSU. I don't know if LSU actually sees starting potential in him or if they just view him as a good insurance policy. Either way though, I do think Swan has a legitimate chance. He was a great recruit out of high school, has already done some pretty great things at a school like Vanderbilt, and has all the tools in my opinion to be a starting quarterback. The problem is though, Garrett Nussmeyer is more experienced in the system and also had that great bowl game. Nussmeyer is the presumed starter, but anything can happen. If Nussmeyer struggles, gets hurt, or if Swan completely balls out in the offseason, he could end up being a guy who makes an impact for LSU and would truly be the case of a guy who came out of absolute nowhere. The final guy we're to talk about is Brock Vandergriff. He is actually my favorite transfer quarterback in the country, and I think he's going to do a tremendous job this season at Kentucky. Kentucky has honestly been pretty weird. They've pretty much had all transfers over the last few years, as it started with Terry Wilson, then went to Joey Gatewood, then Will Levis, and then last year Devin Leary. They can't seem to recruit their own guy, but maybe they'll hit. They seem to hit, miss, hit, miss, and now they're back to the point where they hit. Vandegrift is probably that guy, and coming out of high school, you would have never thought he'd be in this position. He ended up going to Prince Avenue Christian High School in Georgia, and it's weird that four of these five quarterbacks are from Georgia, and he was one of the best high school quarterback recruits ever. His name is in the banners of Georgia high school football history, and it was encapped by an incredible senior year in which the team went 13-1, won a state title, and he completed 71% of his passes had over 4,000 yards, 46 touchdowns, and also ran for over 500 yards and 17 scores on the ground. He was named the best quarterback in the state of Georgia and was originally the guy that Lincoln Riley had brought into Oklahoma. Unfortunately though, they ended up going with Caleb Williams and Vandergriff would decide to commit to Georgia instead. He was a five-star recruit, a top 10 player nationally, and one of the guys who was gonna play three years and go to the NFL. Fortunately though, it would never quite really work out for him at Georgia. He played a little bit against UAB in 2021, and then was a complete reserve quarterback in 2022. This past season in 2023, he lost the starting job to Carson Beck and ended up going for 165 yards and two touchdowns. He was once again a backup, and with Beck coming back for a Heisman campaign in 2024, Vandergriff felt the need to make the move and will now go to an SEC school just a couple hundred miles away. Kentucky needed a new quarterback, and while they did bring in their prodigy guy, Cutter Bowley, Vandergriff will be a great option for two years. Vandergriff obviously has the arm talent, has the height, has the athleticism, has been really well coached, was super highly recruited, and I think has that it factor that Kentucky football has been missing. Devin Leary was sort of made of broken glass, Will Levis never really realized his potential, and both Joey Gatewood and Terry Wilson were limited with their arm talent. Vandegrift could be the best of those worlds, and I think he's going to have an insane season for Kentucky. They haven't been known to put up huge numbers at the quarterback spot, but Vandegrift's the most talented player Kentucky's had in a long time, and I'm really excited to watch him this year. But what do you guys think? If you're a fan of any of these schools, what do you think of your new transfer quarterback? What did I get right and wrong? And if I should do a part two, what quarterback or transfer should I include? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you didn't support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.